The stock market was absolutely annihilated today. Dow Jones down 623 points. We had another yield curve inversion, the two year and 10 year inverted yet again. This is a major warning sign. We know what precedes this. In the past 50 years of history it has never been wrong. It has told us that there is a recession to, to follow. There are people out there telling you that there's no concern here. There's nothing to worry about. These people are full of BS. You need to be very concerned right now with what's coming. We have an economic collapse coming to America. The collapse has begun and you need to be preparing. It's Friday, August 23rd, 2019. As I watch another meltdown take place uh, on the Dow Jones today, uh, what was interesting was with just a, a few minutes left to go, the Dow Jones was down 750 points. And all of a sudden, it seemed like somebody put the brakes on it and they brought it back uh, to 623 points down. This thing was heading straight to 800 points negative and beyond but I don't know if it was the plunge protection team or, or how this was manipulated, but it's just shocking how this thing had so much momentum in the, in the last few minutes of closing, hitting 750, looking like it's going beyond 800, and all of a sudden it stops, turns around, closes at 623 points down. This could have been a very disastrous day, and somebody out there knew that, and I would probably, uh, Put a few dollars on it that it was the plunge protection team making sure that this thing didn't overheat break negative 800 points maybe even 900 a thousand who knows this thing was melting down and it seemed like they could not get a handle on it but the last few minutes they were able to put the brakes on it and save it uh, from going down negative uh, 800 points what also is interesting uh, out of curiosity i just looked up some stocks today jc Penney's. This is a stock that back in March 2018 was $11.57. Today, it is 55 cents. Sears, back in May 2015, it was $40.52. Today, it is 27 cents. We are witnessing a global slowdown, which is slowly turning into a global meltdown. Uh, we are seeing demand for goods and services beginning to really slow down. You can just feel it as, as you go out and you hit the malls or you, when I was in Vegas or when I'm in Orange County, you can just tell that people are, are holding back. People out there are getting tapped out. Uh, they're running up so much credit that you know some people just cannot spend anymore. They're, they're falling so far behind. Uh, there is a ton of risk out there and so much uncertainty and I believe that a lot of people are starting to feel that uh, they, they may not follow these markets on a daily basis like we do, but they are feeling something is wrong. They're feeling uncertainty. Uh, there's people out there that have no choice. They're tapped out. Their credit cards are maxed or they're getting very close to being maxed and they're buying just the, the, the goods and services that they need. And what's sad is 25% of all people holding credit cards in America right now are using their credit cards for necessities paying rent, uh, buying food. Um, this is a sign of the times. And just think how bad this is gonna be when this recession really erupts here in America. Uh, obviously, uh, most of the news today was the, was the China trade war, the tariffs. And this president came out and, and he, he tweeted, who's, who's our bigger enemy, Pao or Xi? And if you ask me that question, that would be a hard one to answer because I believe that China is uh, one of the biggest enemies America has, uh, at least um, when we look at it as a military uh, or, or economy. Uh, China definitely is the biggest threat to America. The, the amount of technology they've stolen, the power and size of their military, the, the size of their economy, uh, having the biggest bank in the world, uh, they are America's number one rival. And when we talk about the Federal Reserve, I mean, this is a private central bank with very powerful, dark people 
sitting at the table. These are your Rothschilds. These are your Illuminati. Uh, these are very, very evil people. So I believe that both of these are probably the two most powerful, dangerous enemies to the United States of America. And I believe that both of them must be stopped. An absolutely chaotic day on the stock market today. And this trade war with China is getting very, very serious. I believe it's going to last much longer than most people had anticipated. It is really getting serious. China today announced it will impose new tariffs on $75 billion worth of U.S. goods in addition to restarting levies on American autos. Electronics, which will include cell phones and semiconductors, is the biggest category of American uh, imports into China. Machinery is another uh, really big category of Chinese imports, which dragged down sales of Caterpillar today uh, at 3.3%. But there's a whole list. These are, are your, your two, three biggest categories, but there's a whole list of uh, other categories that are included. Uh, there was retaliation today by this president. And let me go over what the retaliation will be. Starting October 1st, the 250 billion, the $250 billion of goods and products from China currently being uh, uh, taxed at 25% will be taxed at 30%. The remaining $300 billion of goods and products from China that was being taxed from September 1st at 10% will now be taxed at 15%. Uh, the president said, thank you for your attention to this matter. Uh, he does not seem to be playing games. You know, I know a lot of people want this trade war to be over. They, they want these markets, the, these um, fake markets to get back in, in, into the swing of things. But uh, it seems as though this president is not playing games. He is, he is sick and tired of the intellectual property that China has stolen. He is sick of the games. He is sick of being ripped off. Nobody complains about the millions and millions of jobs that were shipped over in the 90s that we lost. This is what really gutted the middle class. This was the beginning of the end. So many American, iconic American companies uh, like Levi Strauss making one of the most iconic uh, pieces of clothing, Levi jeans in China. I mean, you look at an American flag today, it's made in China. I mean, where, where does this end? Do we just continue? Do we just say, okay, let's go back uh, you know, to normal. You can keep stealing all of our technology and our intellectual property. You can keep ripping us off um, in the trade war and we'll just accept it as long as Wall Street is making money and the 0.001% are happy, that's all that matters. Uh, I'm glad we're finally stepping up to them because I'm gonna tell you, they are, one of the biggest threats to our freedom, to our economy, to our future. And I believe that if we don't step up and stand up to China right now, America is not, no longer going to be the world superpower. China will be. And we finally have somebody who is standing up to them. But these greedy uh, globalists, the, these, these people, these, this 0.001%, these sellouts, uh, these bankers, uh, these people, just want to go back to normal while we get ripped off, have our technology stolen, and we risk our freedom, we risk uh, the so sovereign, uh, sovereignty of this nation uh, by allowing China to become bigger, richer, more powerful uh, economically and militarily. I don't want to live under a communist government. In fact, I don't really want to deal with a communist government. These people, I mean, just look at what they do to dogs and cats over there, chopping, you know, chopping these animals up alive, eating them. Uh, they, they have no God. Um, all the uh, organ stealing that takes place in China. I, I mean, we all know what's going on over in China. The persecution of people, the slave labor camps, they are not a nice people. This is a evil, evil government, and I'm glad somebody is finally standing up to them. I really hope that people are taking every day to prepare. There was an article on Zero Hedge today, way beyond the 12%, exposing the but it's only manufacturing. This is the title of the article. Manufacturing is 12% of the economic output here in America. U.S. manufacturing hasn't been this bad since September of 2009. Now, the larger market is the service sector market. Uh, the PMI of the service sector market dropped from 53 in July 
to 50.9 in August. New business growth is at the slowest it's been in a decade. The service sector is losing momentum. We look at um, uh, cities like uh, Las Vegas or even right here in Palm Springs. This whole area, the entire Coachella Valley is so dependent on the service sector because of all the casinos, all the hotels, all the restaurants, all the bars. And we are starting to see a slowdown in the service sector, which is the largest sector that we have here in America, bigger than the manufacturing sector. And I believe that America is not gonna succeed, is not gonna prosper if it is dependent on a service sector. We must be manufacturing. This is where the Chinese are beating us. They are making everything. I mean, you know, how many Lyft and Uber drivers is this economy gonna support? And if people don't have real jobs to pay the service sector, like the Lyft drivers, like the Uber drivers, um, as, as people are, are, are not having wage growth, as they're not getting ahead, as they're not getting real jobs, they're not gonna be calling the Lyft and Uber drivers. They're not gonna be reliant on the service sector. Um, so we must start seeing real jobs here in America. Medical assistance, you know, that's great, but that's not gonna, that's not gonna support this economy. Uh, and unfortunately, um, I don't see that happening anytime soon. And this is really, really dangerous. Uh, Wolfstreet.com. In July, new single family houses fell 4.5% from July of 2018. Do your due diligence, it's right here, wolfstreet.com. The plunge in rates has been touted for months as the thing that would kick the housing market into gear. And I think that they really thought that that was gonna work, but here's the problem. The consumer is getting tapped out. They can't get approved for a loan because they have too much debt. And what kind of debt do they have? Well, they have credit card debt, they have student loan debt, and they have auto debt. And they're not making enough income to pay this debt down. So you can uh, lower mortgage rates to 1%. It's not gonna matter because if the average Joe is loaded with credit card debt, student loan debt, auto debt, he is not getting approved for a loan. If he does not have a job that pays a real wage, he is not gonna buy a house. If you live in Orange County, uh, and you're working in the service sector, you're not buying a house. That's just the way it is. We see increases in mortgage apps. We see price drops. We see mortgage rates dropping. We should see record-breaking sales in this housing market right now. The economy is not great. The consumer is broke. You can drop mortgage rates all you want, ladies and gentlemen. It is not gonna help the housing market unless you have a strong job market with real jobs. Like I said, nothing wrong working a service sector job, and that's all some people wanna do, and that's great. Uh, some people might be retired, and that's a great job for them. Somebody might be in college. Um, somebody might be using that as a stepping stone. But for the person looking to buy a home, and to, to have an independent life, working in the service sector in America is not going to get you the house and the lifestyle of a middle class citizen. And unfortunately, most of the jobs today in America, our biggest job growth is in the service sector. We have currency devaluing taking place in China right now. The Yuan is crashing and um, we know that this president wants to see the US dollar weaken. We are witnessing not just a trade war, but a currency war taking place. And this tells you one thing, that gold and silver are going to continue to go up. And let's, let's talk about gold and silver today. The two most undervalued assets in the entire world went ballistic today. Gold up over $28, silver up over 41 cents. And they are now beginning to get some attention as there is uncertainty, as, as people are getting nervous. They're running to hard assets like gold and silver. They're running to bonds. Uh, I don't know who would buy a 10-year bond at 1.52%. You are just giving your money away. Uh, no doubt, if you have a choice, you'd be running to gold or silver. And I, I, I truly believe 
that this is, we have seen nothing yet. You are going to see gold and silver absolutely go nuts. They're, it's going to go, they're going to go bananas. We have not had a black swan event yet. We have not had a major catastrophe happen uh, yet. We haven't had a Deutsche Bank blow up. We, we, we have not had a major emergency uh, financially take place yet. When something big happens, you are going to see the metals go crazy. And I think that now people are beginning to see where the safe haven really is. It's not paper. It's hard, tangible assets like gold and silver. Uh, as I, I said uh, in a couple of my other videos, I made an order last week from SD Bullion. I made another order this week from SD Bullion. Uh, people still ask me uh, where I recommend a good place to purchase gold and silver. Uh, it's SD Bullion. I have a link down below, SD Bullion. That's where I've been buying. They've been phenomenal. The prices uh, have been very hard to beat. The service is great. And I've been getting my medals quickly. So link down below, SD Bullion. Uh, they will take very, very good care of you. And you know you're getting the best price. And right now, while it's affordable, I highly recommend that you diversify and get some metals. There's no excuse with uh, silver still under $18 that you don't have some. Um, what happens when gold hits $2,000? How many people will be priced out? It's not getting any cheaper. Yeah, there might be some pullbacks here and there, but we know the direction that we're, we're heading into. We are heading into very, very stormy water here globally. Uh, there is too much uncertainty. And remember, gold and silver have never been worth zero. They are gonna be your life jacket when this tsunami hits. So I highly recommend that you get some of this right now. Silver's under $20, gold uh, is under uh, $1,600. It's under $2,000. But at some point, you're gonna get priced out of gold for sure. And at some point, uh, people are gonna get priced out of silver. It's cheap right now. Both of them are very cheap. I highly recommend that you have some of this in your portfolio. Although, remember, I'm not a financial advisor or a planner, but this is my belief. This is what I'm doing. I've had two orders in the last two weeks now from SD Bullion, and uh, I'm, I'm just converting savings into hard assets. I'm just taking some of my monopoly money and putting it into hard assets. As you know, I believe that you should have some cash put away where you can get to it. And I certainly believe you should have gold and silver or at least silver. But if you can um, afford to have both, I would diversify and have both. Do not hold these metals in a bank. Make sure that you have them where you can get to them, not a safety deposit box in your bank, and make sure you are buying physical gold, physical silver, not, uh, not paper. I wanna close on this. Another reason that reinforces why you better be preparing, why you better have metals, why you better have security to protect your metals, and why we better really be waking up and paying attention to what's going on here. Uh, this was on Reuters today. Mexican economy stagnates in second quarter, weaker than earlier estimated. Reuters, do your homework. Uh, Mexico now is heading into recession. Germany is now heading into recession. Uh, America, I believe, is in recession. So it's getting bad all the way around. And there's just going to come a point where, you know, listen, this isn't uh, a competition of who's right or who's wrong. This is no competition. Uh, this is no game. This is a time that all of us really need to be paying attention not going, oh, I'm going to be right, or that guy's going to be right, or, you know, Bitcoin's, you know, the answer, or gold and silver's the answer, or this stock's the answer, or just doing this is the answer. I believe that you should be diversified. I'm not telling anybody to sell all their stock or to put all their cash into metals or not own cryptocurrencies. What I'm saying is I believe you need to be very, very diversified. Uh, I believe that you need to have some cash. I believe you need to have some hard, tangible assets. And I believe you need to have them where you can get to them. I believe you should have food, water, security, a, a plan, a group that you can rely on. I believe that you should have a skill set. I, I believe you should be self-sufficient, be your own central bank, be your own security, you know, be your own police, uh, be reliant on yourself because as this thing gets critical, there is going to be no one to rely on. The government will not be there for you. Your bank is not going to be there for you. Your police are not going to be there for you. The only person that is going to be there for you is you. And another 
recommendation is to be walking closer to God because out of all the assets that you could have in the world, God is going to be the best. God is going to be the strongest asset, the most important asset in your life. But God gave us all brain. God gave us all free will. And God is waking people up to start using your brain. Start listening to your heart. Uh, God isn't just going to uh, open up the skies and slide down a rainbow and save you. God is warning people right now as he did in the days of Noah. The flood is coming. You better be building your ark and preparing. People may be laughing at you now. They may be ridiculing you and making fun of you uh, because you're coming uh, up with a plan. You're building a plan. You're building your ark. Um, you're building up uh, the, the, the necessary uh, skills and tools that you're going to need to get through this. And people are going to laugh at you and make fun of you and ridicule you. But we all know what happened when it started raining, when those first few raindrops came down in the desert and it was followed by more raindrops and more raindrops. And those people wanted to get in the ark. Those are the same people who are going to want to come to your house who aren't going to be laughing. They're going to be crying because they're going to be out in the storm and they're going to perish. They're going to perish financially uh, or they're going to perish physically. You do not want to be one of those people. God gave you a brain. He gave you free will and he is waking you up right now. And you know, you can, you can feel it. You can tell your heart's telling you something's wrong here and that you better get ready. And that's truly how I believe um, things are going right now. And the wheat and the chaff are being separated. The, the believers and the non-believers are being separated. And if you're a non-believer, uh, I believe that when this economic storm hits the globe and it hits America, uh, many non-believers are going to pe become believers quite quickly. And uh, I believe that a lot of us are going to depend on our faith uh, to get through this. But again, God is waking you up and he's given you free will and it is time to prepare and to get ready. So who cares who's laughing? Who's, who cares who's making fun of us? Who cares who's ridiculing us? It doesn't matter. I can afford to be wrong. You can afford to be wrong. But can those people afford for us to be right? And the answer is probably not. So I'm gonna wrap it up right here. Before I go, I wanna mention one more thing. Most of us know people who are very, very intelligent, uh, very well educated. Uh, you know, the people that, you know, have uh, a degree or they have multiple degrees. Yeah, they went to a, a very upscale college or an Ivy League uh, college. You know, some of these people are the most dumbed down, asleep people that I know. And there's people out there with a third or fourth or fifth grade education that know more than these people. And, and so what I wanna say is this, you might have a third grade education or a fifth grade education. Don't ever let that stop you. You are smarter than the guy who went to Berkeley or the guy that went to Harvard or Yale because you're awake. You took the time and you woke up and you educated yourself on what's coming to America. You woke up, you opened your mind and you didn't depend on the media to brainwash you and dumb you down. So don't let somebody who, who makes more money than you, who has more degrees than you, who went to an Ivy League school, who has a better job than you, don't think that these people are better than you or know more than you do. You know, like the people in Hollywood who think that they know more than everybody. They don't. I don't care if you have a fifth grade education you are awake. You are going to prosper when this economic collapse comes. You're going to make it. You're going to prosper and you're going to survive it. A degree is not going to save you. Money uh, is not going to save you. Your car is not going to save you. A watch is not going to save you. Where you live is not going to save you. What is going to save you is being awake, walking close to God, and your preparations. What you're doing right now today is going to save you tomorrow. So don't ever underestimate yourself because somebody has more money 
a better education or a better job or drives a nicer car or wears a nicer watch than you do. What matters is what you're doing right now. You're awake, you're preparing, and you're the kind of person who's gonna survive, and you're the kind of person that I look up to, that I respect, and you're gonna be the kind of person that many people look up to. Again, these are the people that are gonna be knocking at your door, wanting you to save them. And that's a decision, and probably another video on another day, what happens when your friends or your relatives or your family members who laughed and ridiculed you, who you know wanted to show you their big fancy degrees or their fancy car while you were making sacrifices for many years preparing for what's coming. You made sacrifices, you made preparations, you educated yourself. These people just partied away, uh, relied on their degrees, their jobs and their money, um, and the hopes that nothing bad would happen as they were being dumbed down by the indoctrination camps, the universities, and the media. What happens when these people come to your house? That's a whole nother video, but let's, let's, you know, let's think about that. You know, comment down below. Uh, what happens when these friends or these family members who laughed at you and made fun of you for your preps, and your preparation, and your strategies, what happens when the lights go out uh, when the violence is chaotic in the streets, when there's no food, what are you going to do? Are, the, are you going to let these people in your house? I haven't really thought about that, but it's something maybe we should think about. Comment down below. I'd be very curious to know what you think, what you would do. Have a phenomenal weekend. God bless America. Make sure you are praying for this country. We got big trouble coming. Talk very soon.